Duke made no secret that he wore a toupee in his films or when appearing in public. He treated it as a professional prop, as necessary to his actor's craft as makeup and costumes. In his private life, he was not personally vain. He seldom wore the hairpiece when aboard the Wild Goose, and he didn't mind if others saw him bald. Nor was he self-conscious about posing for home movies and photographs minus his toupee. Like a lot of celebrities, they were very conscious about people having cameras around them. That never seemed to bother Duke. Uh, the crew had cameras, and his friends would carry cameras, and he'd get very relaxed on the boat. And the fact that he was bald, he looked very different, and you'd see him sitting there. I asked uh, Duke once if I could take uh, pictures, and he says, well, sure. He says, go ahead. But he says, he says, try to let me know so I can turn my good side, you know. And it was all jest, of course. And I assume from the way he handled us taking pictures, he would never shy away from the camera or try to duck or, or uh, tell us not to shoot now. Or I was never told at any time I couldn't shoot anything that I wanted. When the need arose, he preferred wearing a hat to cover his lack of hair. At other times, usually when giving interviews or during certain social events, Duke would reluctantly don his toupee. If I wasn't in show business, he once confided to a crew member, I wouldn't even own the damn thing. As he realized, however, that damn thing had become an important part of his public image. He might not like wearing it, but he didn't treat it casually either, an attitude he made clear one day during a shipboard interview with a British film crew. Well, we were up on the bridge underway, and they were, had the camera set up on the foredeck, and they wanted to get pictures of him standing out on the wing. And the wind was blowing pretty good because we were headed into it. And so he hollers down at the camera crew. Uh, he says, do I look okay? Everything okay? Before they start shooting. And they hollered up, you look fine, Mr. Wayne. And I turned and I looked at him, and the wind had gotten under the rug, and it was turning it back up like this. And those guys were going to go ahead and shoot him like that. So I, <laughs> I looked over, I took a double take when I seen what was happening. I hollered at him, and, and, and he, he finally looked over at me, you know, like, what did I want? And I went like this to him, <laughs> and he reached up and he felt that, and he goes, oh! And of course, a few unkind words came out of him, and he shot into the wheelhouse. And he says, those so-and-sos were going to go ahead and film me like that, weren't they? And so he ducked down, re-glued it, and then they retook the, took the picture. But that was about the only time I ever saw him get excited about it. He was pretty conscious when it came to, to camera work, but otherwise, just normal public, he didn't seem to mind too much. The most prolific picture taker in the crew was Bert Minshaw, who owned movie and still cameras, both of which he put to frequent use. With Minshaw around, Duke liked to joke, I should be paid a performing fee. Yet he good-naturedly indulged Bert's more serious attempts at shipboard movie making. Even when the budding director called for a second take. Duke was often playful before the cameras of others, and he was not above looking a little foolish if the mood was upon him. Nevertheless, he knew when a camera was around. A sixth sense he had developed over 40 years of celebrity and movie making. Yet the actor's sense of fun usually prevailed over the sometimes intrusive lenses of those around him. When Bert went to take his picture one time, Duke pointed in his direction and said in a loud stage whisper, Look out for that guy. He's a sneaky bastard with a camera. And then grinned as the first mate clicked away. <laughs> 